Okay, um, I hope everyone can uh, hear me fine, but uh, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you're tuning in from uh, today. So we will begin this uh, webinar on how to specify human-centric lighting, and this is done in conjunction with Kasambi Partners Eldo LED. Uh, we are doing this uh, live from both our studios, so I'm here in Kasambi headquarters here in Finland, and I'm joined by Mark and Hay, who are over in the Netherlands, live in their, in their studio as well. I'll do just a little bit of the housekeeping first. So what's the actual um, setup that we have for today? And what's the time periods? And also what's the format? So uh, we've got specified 20, uh, 60 minutes in total for the, for the webinar. We've got around 40 minutes uh, in the presentation style. And then we'll have a question and answers 20 minutes after. Um, we'll do our best to stick into the schedules. And we've got quite a big number of turnouts today. So there will be quite a number of questions, I'm sure, that will be coming in during the, during the 40 minutes. So we will do our best to answer all of them. If we can't, then we will send um, the follow up and we'll answer to all your questions uh, via email at the end. Uh, if you can't uh, stay for the whole 60 minutes, that's no problem because we will send you the recording um, afterwards so that you can catch up where we left off. Uh, okay, so without further ado, I'll, I'll start uh, and may maybe I'll begin actually to start with why uh, we've chosen this topic and why we see it as being so important uh, in the world that we're living in today. Uh, and there's really three key main topics that we're seeing at the moment in the world. And that's first one is digitalization. And what we're really seeing is this advancement in technology where there is a number of connected devices all moving towards this IoT uh, and infrastructure, which is driving forward. And this is coupled actually with uh, sustainability and with climate change. Um, we're seeing as well with the sustainable development goals that have been issued from the UN in 2015. Uh, we can see the number of these um, being really playing a really important factor in the life, not just personally, but also professionally as well. And then it's about actually combining these two together and really I I've exemplified well-being here because this is actually point number three in the sustainable development goals. But this is really how do we um, promote well-being and health in the world that we're living in and moving forward as well in the years to come. Um, so I've put on the screen there, you can see on the bottom right, for example, the well, well building standards, but there is also others like LEED and BREAM, which are constantly being looked at and looking forward to, to how do we make sustainable buildings um, more inhabitable for, for the future. Looking a bit forward, so going into where lighting and the lighting industry falls into these key main topics and what you can see from the screen is actually from Lighting Europe, which is a membership group of around a thousand of, of some of the biggest uh, lighting industry players in Europe. And what they've really identified here is how the last five to 10 years have really been dominated by these LEDs and really saving energy efficiency in transforming and moving into these LEDs. And then if you take that sort of a step further, you can see that when you combine your lighting um, control system with these LEDs, you can then enable greater energy efficiency. You can use the lights when they're needed. You can use the lights when they're not, and you can enable further sustainability savings there. And then this is where we've moved into sort of the topic of today and this real sort of human centric lighting, uh, which we'll touch upon for, from the Aldo led team in, in, in a few minutes. But in brief, it's really about how do you put uh, people at the core of the design. So how do you put the actual human experience to come first? Uh, and this is where you sort of combine both the LEDs, you combine the intelligent lighting system, and then you use them productively to really promote that health and well-being, which I think particularly in this corona, coronavirus impact that we've had in the last 12 months or so is ever increasing and ever more important. How, how do we entice people back to the offices, for example? How do we make it more productive? How do we make it more efficient? Uh, and this could be in the office environment, but also in schools, uh, in productivity, wh whichever um, arena it may be. Uh, with this, so for human-centric lighting, uh, this will actually be introduced um, from the team over at Eldoled. Uh, but essentially, you need three main components to really build this effectively. Uh, and it's a combination of hardware and software. So first, you need your LED driver. Second, you need your LED. And third, you need the control to actually combine all these parts together and this forms the basis of our, of our presentation today. So um, I'd like to send you over to the team in Netherlands. So Mark and Hay, um, please um, take it away. Well, 
many thanks, Christian, for uh, this introduction, uh, but also the opportunity to be here together in this webinar with you, uh, where we will talk about human-centric lighting, right? So here on my left side, G. Hulsmans. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody. And um, as you're always saying, uh, my name is uh, Mark Kramer. So um, before we look into the topic of human-centric lighting, uh, we really would like to uh, briefly touch on LLED. Uh, because uh, we were invited by uh, Kazami to this webinar. Um, so, Eldolet, we care about light as a driver manufacturer. Um, and uh, we're really aiming for a world where illumination is equal in character and quality to natural light. And we do that by helping the lighting community and delivering on these lighting solutions um, to make them look better and delivering the best that you can with LED. Um, and we've done, that, we've done that over the past years, and we continue to do so. And delivering on that quality of light message. Uh, because quality of light does mean different things to different people. Definitely, yes. So <laughs> you can think about someone who cares about the dimming of the lighting, uh, but maybe in another application or another uh, person does care about the quality of the power that comes into the luminaires. I think about a very unstable mains power that um, has any has a lot of impact on the lighting quality in the space. So we care about the quality of the light to all spaces where people live, work, and learn. So, and that's basically the starting point for today, where Kazambi is our success to interoperability to wireless control um, from a from a system perspective. So first of all, we'll um, dive into a little bit of, um, say, um, basic steps yep. to deliver on that. Uh, and we start with dimming, right, Gé? Yes, this is, uh, thanks, Mark, uh, for, for this, yes. Qu uh, quality of light means different things for different people. And one of the quality of light aspects that really many people care about is the quality of the dimming. And that's not always so easy because to dim an LED, that's, um, well, Technically, not so easy, but also um, in many projects, you see that the dimming of an LED is actually done pretty badly. We've introduced the term natural dimming. And basically what we've said as a, as a company, we would like to make the dimming experience the best. Uh, and the best dimming experience that is available is of course, uh, well, I always say the dimming as if it was the sun, if you wish, because the sun is the, the, best, uh, the best light, the best natural light there is. And if you would like to, uh, well, to create a certain ambience, um, uh, this is something we would like to mimic. If we mimic that, not so much in, the, in, the, in, the, in nature, but in other light sources, the best dimming experience in other light sources is in incandescent light or in halogen light, because that dimming goes really to really low levels. Uh, and in the end, if you dim really low with an incandescent light, uh, it gets a little, well, a little cozier, if you wish. It gets a little more well, warmer, if, mm -hmm. um, if you wish. And that is something, uh, well, if you, if you would like to do that with, an, with just a simple LED, that's, that's not so easy. Uh, so that's it. So basically, we're trying, to, we're trying to mimic that. Furthermore, aspects of uh, perfect dimming is the story on steppiness of your, of your dimming. Obviously, nobody wants your dimming to go like this. And we actually see the fact that there is a change in intensity. That's not, uh, that's not uh, uh, liked uh, a, a lot. And also, people don't like flicker. And if we talk about flicker, we actually have two kinds. We have flicker that you can actually see, uh, so that you actually see the light flicker. But there's a different type of flicker that, well, some people see, or actually some people sense. That's mm -hmm. a better word. Some people feel, and others don't. And so hypersensitive people are very receptive for bad lighting when it comes to quality. And that has to do with well, I can't make it any other way with the driver. So the choice of the driver is, uh, is crucial. I'll, I'll dive into that uh, later as well. So dim to warm, tunable white, and that whole dynamic approach, I will, I will dive into that as well. And here I'm going to uh, talk about first the deepest dimming level that you can achieve by dimming, uh, dimming an LED. The lighting industry talks about dimming levels with a certain percentage. Um, this luminaire can dim to, I don't know, 20% or to 1%. And what we're actually talking about then is a certain percentage of measured light. So light that you actually measure with a device. Unfortunately, the human eye is not a good light meter or is actually the best light meter is, but there's something important here. Your, the human eye is not 
a, um, well, it's not a linear device, it's logarithmic. So what does that mean? It means that if there's just tiny little bit of light, uh, imagine you walk in nature and the moon is shimmering just a little bit. What actually happens in the human body is that the pupil of your eye actually increases and that tiny little, little bit of light that is there has the possibility to, ent to, well, to enter your eye and then everybody can see, see pretty well. And that is the relation that, well, the light in design community, everybody should understand. Measured light is something completely different than perceived light. So if you have a driver that technically dims down to 1%, in essence, because of the non-linearity of the human eye, it only dims to 10% of perception. And this is something uh, important for you to understand. So if you specify a 1% driver in a cinema where this low level dimming is, ex is extremely important, that is just not good enough. And also if you want to create colors and we talk about human centricness uh, later, this is something where that dimming is important in order to achieve the total color range. And so that deepness of the dimming is crucial in order to achieve the best human centric lighting approach. I'll talk about that uh, later. So second topic, which is crucial when it comes to quality of light, where the driver is involved, and Mark gave a good introduction here, is flicker. And flicker is not good. Flicker is bad. It can create <laughs> fatigueness or eye strain or blurred vision. And some people link it to epileptic seizures or, or some people link it to autism. I'm not a medically trained person. I don't pretend to be. Um, but for a lighting designer, it's pretty easy to avoid this because there is a specification that we comply to as a driver manufacturer that basically gives you objective, objective information about the amount of flicker that the driver actually produces. And that is called IEEE. And it's, uh, it goes too far in order to explain it uh, in a lot of detail. You can check our YouTube channel. We have lots of explanations there, but in essence, it's about making sure that the driver communicates about the amount of flicker it produces. And if it's in the green area of this, um, of this graph, it is acceptable for human beings. It's not detectable. And if it's in the white area, it actually means that it's detectable and there is a big chance of obvious negative impacts. And so those are two topics I would really like to start with. This is quality flight when it comes to the driver, Mark. Yeah, so in all these technologies, right, so we got, we're not going into more, more detail today, um, so that's uh, for another time. Yeah. Um, but in, in, in essence, it's a full portfolio of drivers that we offer delivering on those quality of light elements. Um, and with that, uh, what you can see here, a full range of drivers, um, and where we're talking today about Kazami wireless controls uh, in combination with these radios. Yeah. Um, but we see a path forward, right? So from the dimming, from the flicker, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, we, we see a path forward to human-centric lighting, where you start managing full spectrums. Yeah. But before we go looking to the future, or today maybe, let's first go back to where do we come from? Yes, and um, let's get back to London. London, more than 100 years ago. So um, big city, uh, narrow alleys, big buildings, uh, well, sometimes it's a bit of a, a not so nice area to live in and to work in and to work in as well. So look, um, so one of the first things, uh, one of the first clever things that actually a lighting designer um, uh, um, invented are the things that you actually see here um, on, the, on the facade. It's actually, um, well, light reflectors. Mark, could you go to the next slide? Because a light reflector is actually an element that was uh, being invented by a French photographer. And the way he presented himself was basically to get daylight into the office spaces. And I would say this is one of the most important tasks that even nowadays lighting designers do because they are in charge of creating that human centric approach and daylight, there's no question, question is the best human centric approach as well because that we've been living under that daylight for, uh, for thousands of years as well as, uh, as human beings. But in 1915, uh, why burn gas? Why use um, well, electric light, if you wish, not electric, gas light here, uh, if you could actually have with the reflector light, uh, light uh, coming in? And that's quite clever. Um, the first yeah, so, thing the, that, so the starting point should always be daylight. Yes, right? the so, starting point is always daylight. That's also what we see as elder light happening. And that's why we're having this, uh, this talk together with, uh, with Kazambi. So Mark, next slide, please. Because here we go into that human-centric approach. Um, and I believe, I mean, I talk to lighting designers every other day. It's my job in Elderlet to basically make lighting designers understand the impact of a driver and the, and the impact on controls as well. But the role of the lighting designer is putting the user in the light of that design process, human-centric lighting. So lighting designers are crucial here. 
Um, so the human, the, the illuminated uh, environment should not be negatively impacted by, I don't know, whatever, whatever bad lighting. It should be positive uh, contribution to it. And this is where human centric lighting comes in. This is where, for example, um, light and darkness cycles are crucial. And the circadian clock that human beings have is crucial there as well. And we're only scratching the surface about the knowledge that we have here on this topic and that sort of study being done. What we try to focus on today, that human-centric approach, and it is a bit of a, psy, uh, a pseudo uh, scientific term, I have to confess, uh, but it is, uh, it's, it's valid for electric light, but also for um, uh, natural light. It's changes in intensity, dimming, I just explained this, changes in directionality, where does the light actually come from? I mean, the sun and the moon shine from above. Um, if, you, if, you, if you walk in nature and there is a broad daylight, um, the horizon, that light just comes straight to you horizontally, but fires, they shine from below. So directionality of light is crucial there. But today, of course, is changes in color. And this is where we go into spectral control. And if we talk about human-centric lighting and circadian cycles and everything, it's not about having an LED to change color. Mark, every Tom, Dick, and Harry can have an LED change color. No, it's about managing that consistently in every project. And with LEDs, there's a bit of a difficulty, obviously, because mm -hmm. technically every, every LED is different. So let's go to an example. Suppose you are a lighting designer and you get an assignment from a hotel chain in order to create a full human-centric approach. And here we have a hotel room. And you've specified down lights from a certain brand. You've specified uh, a cove lighting um, with, uh, I don't know, a different brand. Of course, you, you all want to do this wirelessly. And then you specify Kazambi. That's, uh, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty obvious, I would, uh, I would say. But the fact that every LED has different technical characteristics, how do you make sure that that whole dynamic cycle is done consistently? And that is a difficult challenge. And this is exactly what we're trying to focus on here in this, um, in this uh, presentation. Yeah, and so before we go back to Christian, right, to, uh, to talk about Kazambi in more detail. Yeah. So let's ask ourselves the question, how do we make sure that we get from luminaire to luminaire the same color? Yes, that is a difficult question. Because Mark. that's one of the biggest elements from the driver perspective to control. Absolutely right. So in order for you to explain this to you, I have a bit of a strange question for you all. Imagine you have four painters, four artists, and every artist, you see them here on your screen, uh, creative people, they make uh, paintings, if you wish. And every artist, I give a palette. And on that palette, I give every artist two tubes of paint, a tube of red paint, Mark, and a tube of blue paint. But these paints come from different manufacturers. So that means the pigments, the binders, the liquids, the additives are different. So the tones of red and the tones of blue in those tubes are completely different. And I'm going to give them an assignment create the color purple. So what do they do? They go to the, into their own rooms, they take their palette, take a little bit of blue paint, a little bit of red paint, start mixing that, and then they come off of that, that color purple uh, to me, Mark. How big do you think the chance is that those four colors purple are the same? 50%. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> the chance is zero. <laughs> because obviously, um, I didn't give them the right assignment. Everybody comes back with a different uh, uh, color because my assignment was not really good, good enough because we uh, should give them a, a, a better assignment. And the assignment is, could you go to the next slide, please, Mark? Um, we should be very more specific on the definition of the color. This is where Kazambi does make the difference. So, and, and Christian will take over and explain that in a lot of detail, but then we will cut back and make sure that you truly understand as well that the mixing of the colors, the mixing of the LEDs of the colors, that is a crucial point as well. And this is what we've solved for you in the actual elder led driver. And we call that light shape. Back to Christian to talk about color control. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that introduction into why the LED driver is uh, so important here um, for this topic. And give me one second. Okay, so you can see my screen. Okay, fantastic. Then if we look at a bit forward, so moving into actually, so you first heard off why the LED driver is so important. Uh, obviously you've got the LED. Then the third component here is obviously the control uh, and this is fundamental to piece all these pe piece all the pieces together of, the, of this jigsaw. 
And essentially what you're looking for from a control is it to be robust in the sense that you can rely on it to work and it will be implemented exactly as you intend it to be. Uh, it has to be proven uh, so that you know there's partners in the field that are actually working with the technology and that it's, it's trusted, uh, it's industry leaders who are trusting it and that you have an ecosystem of products available to really complement uh, the, the whole package. And, and this is the sense where nobody wants, nowadays wants to be locked to one manufacturer. You want a wide variation to be able to choose from and to really complement each other as your requirements see fit. And obviously the, the first comment I, I made about sustainability and moving forward, looking towards the future, you want the building not only to be ready today for the needs, but also for the future. And how do you accommodate for that? Um, so if we look in a bit deep dive into sort of Kasambi and how do we feel that we fulfill these requirements. Um, so the first off, uh, most of you should be aware um, as it's a Kasambi webinar, but I'll briefly just touch upon each point. So the Kasambi system itself, so we're built on Bluetooth low energy. And the advantages that you have of this is essentially you have no single point of failure. There's no need for gateways, there's no need for routers, and there's definitely no need for any additional hardware pieces that, not, that is not absolutely necessary. So with this, you actually get a self-healing mesh structure so that it's the real intelligence is within each side of the Kasambi nodes. So it's, it's not this master slave structure that you have anymore. It's more this brain within each, each Kasambi unit that's out there in the field. If you're looking towards the proven aspects, then Kasambi itself, we're here in Finland. This is actually where Bluetooth low energy was being developed at the time in Nokia. And this is where our two founders actually formed into Kasambi nearly 10 years ago. If you fast forward to 2021 and where we're at today, then we have more than 500 ecosystem partners all, all contributing to, to the Kasambi technology. And also we have over 65,000 projects globally um, in the field. So these are all units that have come out and they're actually installed into projects. Uh, looking at the future-proof aspects, uh, Kasambi at its core is essentially a software. Uh, and as we know, software is constantly developing and it's constantly moving forward. Uh, and, and this is the one real sort of uh, benefit that you have with Kasambi is that we have the over the air update capability. And we can ensure this regardless of the manufacturer because we have a standardized firmware implementation and exactly the same hardware Bluetooth chips inside all of the Kasambi devices. So that you can guarantee that not only today when you install a Kasambi project, but also in three to four years, five years, however many years it may be, will provide the constant upgrades, future compatibility and the future functionality that we're constantly adding uh, to all the units. Uh, we're working, as I mentioned, with all these ecosystem partners. We've got many of the industry leading players, as you can see on the screen here, but this is not just limited to the small section that we have. This is also a, a larger screenshot taken from our website, and it's constantly evolving. There's always new partners that are coming on board with Kasambi, and, and really the, the way we see it as an ecosystem is we provide the base sort of technology for our partners to use their expertise and in their respective fields to really drive the market forward. And that's the model that we, we see going forward. So looking more into the human centric uh, lighting approach uh, and maybe the electric lighting part of this, which, which is uh, obviously the second to the daylight. Um, I'll start with maybe what traditionally we know and what's been used to date so far. And this is obviously most people are aware with Dolly from the wired um, side of things where you have your central controller, sort of the, the master, and then you have to take into account the subcontrollers, the subnets, the 64 addresses, uh, and also wired all between uh, and take into account this for the project. Um, the benefits obviously that you do get with, with, with DALI uh, and with, with the system itself is, is it's precise, consistent, and guaranteed output that you have uniform across all the manufacturers that are part uh, with their DALI products. Uh, you can take into account the occupancy, you can um, add additional features such as occupancy or, or present sensing and light sensing as well. And also you can get luminaire and energy diagnostic feedback uh, from, from the hardware um, capabilities. Uh, recently we, we've moved and there's DALI 2 where actually in the specification nowadays and for the purpose of this webinar, um, I'll be focusing a bit more on, on the DALI 2 side of things because now you really have the chance to really digitally uh, assign a color. And this is really relevant here is how do you combine then the hardware capabilities that you have from an LO led driver, for example, um, which has support for DALI DT8 or DALI 2. And then how do you actually control these devices into a project to really enable this user experience to be at the core. 
Uh, and this is where we see it uh, being in conjunction with Kasambi. So what we say is that you have originally on the right hand side, you can see you have your Dolly 2 um, driver. This is connected to the Luminaire. Um, so this is exactly the same setup that we have with Kasambi. And we actually want you to consider, want you to keep using this setup because you get all the added benefits of having your Dolly 2 driver, but actually the communication between the two, between the drivers and the nodes out there in the field is done via Kasambi. So in that sense, what you're actually getting is all the benefits of Dali without the need for the complex pre-programming. You don't need any additional hardware. There's an environmental and cost and uh, monetary cost, which needs to be taken into account here, which is completely removed. And also any additional pre-planning or the system commissioning, which uh, as you know, you probably have to sit there with, with your laptop, uh, a specialist engineer comes in and it's a very time consuming uh, process. So what you actually have now with Kasambi is you get the benefits from the Dolly 2 color control that you've assigned uh, within the driver, which is doing the calculations, but you also get the added wireless mesh benefits and the ecosystem partner products that can be included into the project. And this requires no pre-planning. -pre so you can freely define a Kasambi enabled device, which could be a driver from manufacturer A and a driver from Aldo LED. Uh, hopefully, obviously for the purpose of this webinar, that it's the Aldo LED driver. But obviously then you get the switches and you get the sensors uh, all integrated with Kasambi. And it's a very easy, intuitive and simple to set up structure that you have for your project. So once you actually have uh, the project set up and then the next thing is to look at, okay, this is the Kasambi control system that I have. How do I really put the user at the forefront of, of my design? And, and what, what tools do I have to be able to enable that? And with Kasambi, it's extremely simple. So you have a number of different capabilities. You have a full lighting control solution sort of at your fingertips within, within an iPhone or an Android device. So with that, uh, with the screenshots uh, that you can see on the right-hand side here, but you get intensity, so you can do your dimming uh, very easily. It's a swipe across, swipe left, swipe right, and you can dim from zero to 1% all the way up until 100% which as you've just heard from Aldo LED is extremely important to really set the scene for what you have uh, per the requirements. In terms of tunability, uh, for tunable white as well, we do have zero to 10 volts um, support. We've got DALI and we do have DALI 2 support so that you can really get this dim to warm and tunable white functionality. You can do the dimming curve adjustments uh, depending on the technical requirements of, of the components that you have at hand. And we have exactly the same setup from the Dolly side where you can have your scenes and recall the lighting scenarios as you see fit. The benefit here with Kasambi is that this is set over the intuitive user application so that there's no limit to the number of scenes that you can have. You can set up these fades to, to come in slowly and you can also set the linger times, which is the time it takes to, to fade out. Uh, we have an option within the Kasambi uh, application itself inbuilt where it's a circadian scene which you can really define the CCT level, so the color temperature levels throughout the day. And I've got one more slide after that where I'll show you how, how simple it is to really set this up and enable it into the features. Uh, third thing to consider is actually how, how is the user going to interact with their lights around them? And you have a number of options that you can consider here. You can choose fully autonomous so that you could put a daylight sensor in there so you can only use the lights will automatically adjust wirelessly communication from the LED driver to the sensor that you have out in one of the offices and these are all uh, free to set up via our application. You could choose to have the manual control for the users in the office space for example if they would like to adjust uh, the lighting level or the color temperature per their personal requirements or you can use your traditional wall switches which can be wired wireless or even uh, battery powered and batteryless as well. So you're free to really design and implement the designs that you have um, at that initial stage. Uh, the best thing is, is obviously being it wireless, being it intuitive user application to do the commissioning as well. As the users and the occupants change, uh, the requirements change as well. And this is something that you get the real benefit with this wireless uh, Kasambi application. Because it's Bluetooth, you still have the local control um, regardless of internet connection. And you can also adjust the settings freely as you wish. So there's no need to wait for any uh, commissioning engineers to come and do it for you. It's very free and adjustable as per the requirements. I briefly touched upon so this circadian scene, and, and this is really just to highlight how, how simple it is to implement with Kasambi. So this is four screenshots that we have from our Kasambi application. 
But essentially what you have, uh, you load up the application, you see the units that are there, and, and you really have this intuitive design where you can freely assign uh, on the third slide a circadian scene where you can set, okay, at this time in the morning, I want a higher color temperature so that it creates alertness for the school kids uh, to get them energized and get them productive in the morning. And then I wanna fade it down in the afternoon uh, in time with the energy levels. And this is all about mimicking the sun outside. And, and this is uh, the forefront of, of this, this implementation. It, it's really good to be aware, all these features are included in the Kasambi application itself. So when you purchase a, a node or you purchase an integrated driver from Aldoled, for example, there is never any subscription fees or additional unlocks that you have to pay extra or any hidden surprises, as we say, uh, in the future for any of your clients. Um, looking forward then, sort of what, what's upcoming and how do we uh, look towards the future? We have, as maybe some of you have seen at our Kasambi Summit, which was two months ago, but we have a new tool that we've actually released, which will be this Kasambi Pro. And in short, what it actually enables now is actually at the design phase. So the first initial phase, you can start setting the commissioning um, param parameters for the project. And typically what I've been hearing from, from Dali side of things at least is you have your project you've designed, um, you've wrote it down in a specification sheet, uh, but it's always someone else doing the commissioning and there's always chain in between uh, maybe a time duration as well to account for uh, and not always in an ideal world obviously 100 percent is actually directly translated to the project but it, in some cases it, it's not and what this uh, new tool actually allows to be is you've got the direct translation from the design intent straightly into the project and it will in considerably increase uh, decrease the workflow and uh, decrease the time it's taken actually at the projects to commission the system. So what actually happens once you've got the projects uh, installed at the site, you've got all the units powered up, all that you actually need is the commissioning engineer or whoever's doing the commissioning to be at the site and to identify and pair the units into the network. And just simply by doing that, you've got all the pre-configured settings loaded straight into the network and uh, the network is ready to go. So it really ensures that you've got this full design intent, which is directly transferable to the project. Um, I'm sure the, the questions are all going to be, OK, when is this going to be released? Um, I, I might as well answer it now. And I'm not actually sure. We don't know yet. We haven't set a release date. But certainly this summer, we expect to have a beta release. So hopefully that will that will cover it for now. So in conclusion, uh, from a Kasambi's side of things, um, you've heard okay that you've got the LED driver, how are the importance of it? You've heard uh, how does the controls then actually interact with, with the components that you have, the hardware pieces, and how do you combine that under one sort of control logic? Uh, and that's where we see Kasambi come in. So we, we see it as this wireless approach to actually have um, the first design intent uh, into the projects and the versatility and the flexibility to design the projects as you see fit. The benefits with it being wireless itself and having this ecosystem of hundreds of partners that we have is as the needs of the space change, as there's new developments in the field, or if you want to add new switches, new sensors, whatever it may be, you're free to do that without any additional planning. These can always be upgraded into the field if there's any new functionality that comes out from Kasambi, because as I mentioned, it's a software at its core, we can actually update these units over the field and you can guarantee the 100% interoperability of remains. So in essence, uh, sort of as a closing statement here from Kasambi's point of view, it, it's really, we make it as easy as possible, easier than ever even to put sort of human experience at the core of your designs. Uh, and with this, then I, I would like to take it back um, to Hay and Mark um, who have some other topics. Um, Thank you, Christian. Um, yeah, and so now you know how, what, what is needed from a controls perspective. So now we're gonna take a look into, okay, how do you solve that in the driver? Um, so, and while I'm bringing up the slides here, um, so um, as a big fan of Kazambi, I would say Kazambi is great, uh, but is it enough, right? So is it enough to deliver on that solution, to deliver on that promise of doing human-centric lighting in the right way? Um, in the old days, we needed a color meter in the application, in the project, to make sure that you deliver on the co color from luminaire to luminaire. Because, in essence, 
there was no control language available that actually could talk color. Correct. Kazambi can. So basically, the color meter is not needed anymore. And that's a big, well, advantage in, well, in your project as such. That saves a lot of hassle, a lot of, uh, so Kazambi at one thing is a great addition. But is that enough, Mark? Well, that's the question, right? <laughs> <laughs> the question is, no, it's not enough. Because you need in the driver something clever as well because we can't change the fact that every LED is different at a technical level. It, deliver, it delivers different light levels, del it delivers different colors, and if you go into the tunable, it is really difficult in order to manage that tunability in your, um, in your project. So this is where we've solved that for you because we've added further, well, intelligence in the driver in order to manage that. And we call that light shape. So light shape is actually extra cleverness in the driver that basically makes the link between the Kazambi system and the LEDs. And that is something which is absolutely vital for the project to create this consistency. Because otherwise you just don't know what you're getting. Kazambi asks it, but it, how do you know you're gonna get it? And that's something where the driver plays a crucial role, Mark. So, so with light shape, you make, basically make sure that you uh, deliver luminaires into the project, which are pre-programmed yes. with that data of the LED. And this is exactly what it, uh, what it is. Extra intelligence in the driver that actually manage this in order for, well, those four painters basically to create the same color purple. And what we do in Lightship is a combination of hardware. You need a driver that mm -hmm. actually has that cleverness inside. We need that firmware that is loaded onto that driver that makes it happen. We call that color science. We've invested a lot of money within elder level of development resources in order to get that straight. And that, is, uh, that is crucial. And the software that enables us to program the driver with information on the LEDs, this is what you do with a flex tool software in order to program the driver. And we enable our customers to program it. Exactly. Right? We, and, that, and, and that makes the driver in the end color aware. Yes, that makes the driver color aware and that ensures that if then Kazambi actually asks for that color information, you know that you're gonna get it too. Because yeah. that is something that sometimes is being forgotten. So this is something I would like to call on to the designers today. Don't only specify Kazambi, that's great, but think of, clever color mixing algorithms in the driver too, and I hope you specify LED with light shape inside, because in essence, that's what, we are, uh, that's what we're trying to do. All and that comes back to the painters, right? So asking for these different, or asking for the same color, temperature, If you go lighting. to the next slide, this so is what, what it is in the end. This is what you want. Asking for purple, delivering. Getting, getting that right color purple, and that's it. So because all the tubes, all the, all the paints are different, all the LEDs are different, and this is where you have to make a link between your control system and your LEDs, and that's what we solve in the driver with, um, with light shape. So the Kazambi system asks for color information, the LED driver is calculating it, and then illuminating it correctly with the right, um, well, with the right specification as, uh, as such. And with this, we would like to summarize. Mark, I'll go over to, uh, to yeah. you. So looking at that system again, right? So um, what we would like to, provide as a takeaway. So uh, with Kazambi, you get that user experience on wireless lighting control and have the capability of control your color intensity and everything you need um, to do human-centric lighting. Uh, in combination with that driver, delivering on the perfect dimming, the flicker performance you need, um, and having that color science in the driver to make that complete system color aware. And making sure that this whole story about user experience, color control, color science, this is what human-centric lighting is all about because in essence what we do, we put the human body, the human person centralized in why we are developing these stories. That's not because we like it, this is, we like it too obviously, but this is because we actually uh, put the user of that light, that, that light consumer centrally in the approach what we, what we try to do on a daily basis, Mark. And that's it. Well, thank you very much, Kay, for that. Um, so before we go to the Q&A, uh, which uh, Christian will host uh, from our side, um, we would like to uh, uh, make you aware of a uh, next webinar that we're organizing together with Kazami and Elderlad, uh, which is going to be much more technical. So it's really uh, aiming to the 
electrical engineers in the lighting manufacturers, where we look in the hardware solution, basically, uh, from Eldolet and Kazambi to build those luminaires uh, for this solution. How to program light shape, for example, is uh, something. Exactly. How Kazambi is being, uh, must be programmed, how the driver must be programmed in order for you to really achieve this uh, this uh, this magic. Sometimes uh, I say, what the light, the magic of the lighting designers, the magic ideas of lighting designers need to become reality, and that reality thing, that reality check. This is what we will talk about next year in four weeks time, June the third. Please join us in the in the next June the, June the third, where Stefan Weidevan on our side will be involved. Uh, because he's much more technical than we are. <laughs> Absolutely, no, uh, no, no, no question. So, and then uh, with that, I would like to hand it over back to uh, back to Christian to uh, to start our Q and A session.